Today, I invite you to join Elon Musk's future great-great-grandchild Bob Musk on his journey to start the first planet-wide restaurant on Mars. This journey will teach you everything you need to know about the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement as an intelligent investor. Accounting is the language of business. Much like you cannot understand what type of dish you are ordering if you don't know the language of the menu, you cannot understand what type of business you are buying in the stock market if you don't know financial statements. Other guys read Playboy. I read financial reports. And by the way, don't worry. You don't need a college degree in accounting or math for this. You just need to listen to how Bob makes shady deals with the Swedish Mars Mafia and how he beats his second cousin Stefan to build the first empire of restaurants on the Red Planet. 2122. A promise and a betrayal. Imagine a future where we have populated the Red Planet of Mars. Much is different in this future technology-wise, but not much have changed financial statement-wise. This is probably the only prophecy you will ever hear on this channel. 85 years after his great-great-grandfather put humans on Mars, Bob Musk raised capital for his first business. Believe it or not, the Musk family all started to have so many babies that Bob didn't inherit much money. All he had to his name was 100 megacoins, MC, the crypto of the future. We've all decided centralized banking is rigged so we trust more and fly-by-night Ponzi schemes. When Bob started his business, he added his life savings, 100 megacoins, to his company Mars Donalds. It was financed through the issuance of common stock. We must highlight an essential difference between the three financial statements right from the get-go. The balance sheet is a snapshot in time of the financial condition of a company. The income statement and the cash flow statement describe what happened financially during a particular period, usually a quarter or a year. The balance sheet is a selfie of your physique. The income statement and the cash flow statement are the training regimes and diets you were on during specific periods. So, Bob created his company by issuing shares for 100 MC. In that, he also increased the company's cash position by the same amount. You see, there are two sides of the balance sheet. The asset side and the liabilities and equity side. The balance sheet has received its name as it must always be in balance. This might be the most fundamental idea from the language of business, and so it is referred to as the accounting equation. Assets equals to liabilities plus shareholders' equity. So, what happens when Bob increases the liabilities and equity side by 100 MC? That's right, he must also increase the other side, the asset side. Something also happened in the cash flow statement, but we'll get to that. So far, so good. Bob went on a hunt for his first Mars property. He knew he needed a place on top of a cliff so that people could easily access the fly-through with their cars. Fast in, fast out. He found the perfect spot on the popular commute between Noctis City and Cupola City. The only problem was that Bob's estimations said that the cost for acquiring the plot and building the place would be 250 MC, which was more than he could afford. But it was the perfect place. He had to solve this somehow. Bob went to the Martian bank of Noctis City to ask for a loan for his business. While waiting for a representative, someone gave him a heavy pat on his back. <laughs> hey, Bob. Long time. What are you doing in a place like this? It was Bob's second cousin, Stefan. Stefan hadn't always been so friendly to Bob when they were younger, so Bob wasn't too pleased of running into him. Oh, hi Stefan. Long time. Uh, um, nothing much. Just applying for a loan for my restaurant. No way! You're kidding! That's what I'm going to do too! Uh, where are you going to open it? Uh, promise you're not opening one right next to me. Ah, of course not. Don't worry about it. I already have signed papers for one here in Noctis. Alright, uh, yeah, sure. Um, so it's on this cliff on the commute between Noctis City and... The Martian bank agreed to lend Bob 200 MC. This meant another increase in cash and equivalents. And it also meant an increase in long-term liabilities. Remember, a balance sheet must always be in balance. It also affected the total debt issued during 2122 in the cash flow statement, 
We'll cover this statement in more detail soon. Said and done, Bob built a beautiful restaurant. For this, he paid a total of 250 MC. The previous landowner received 100 MC for the plot, the 3D printing firm also received 100 MC for printing the place, and then he purchased robot kitchen equipment for 50 MC. Bob paid in cash, so 250 shifted from that line in the balance sheet to a line item called Gross Property Plant and Equipment, which belongs to the long-term assets. The balance sheet isn't just divided by the accounting equation into assets, liabilities and equity. Its assets and liabilities are also subdivided into current and long-term. Current assets can be expected to be converted into cash within a year or less, and current liabilities are due in a year or less. Anything else is long-term. I want you to briefly imagine yourself in the shoes of Mars Donalds. Yes, imagine that you are the company. The assets are what you own. You own the restaurant, a long-term asset, and then you own 50 MC, a short-term asset. On the other hand, liabilities and equity are what you owe. You owe 200 MC to the Martian bank, a long-term liability. Moreover, you owe 100 MC to Bob as a shareholder, who um, brought you to life, so to speak. It's alive! Bob also made his first capital expenditure by purchasing the restaurant, noted on the cash flow statement. Soon, we'll be there. Bob went to knock the city over the weekend to hire his first people. And when he got back, he was unpleasantly surprised. Someone had put up a similar restaurant just on the other side of the Martian flying car road. What the hell? Mars Donalds Plus? Bob got a heavy pat on his back. <laughs> hey man, what do you think? The cliff makes the fly-through really easily accessible, right? It was Stefan. Are you kidding me, man? You promised not to open here. <laughs> Sorry, I had my fingers crossed. What's up with the rip-off? What happened to Stefan's healthy Mars salads? Well, I thought your name was better. Oh, come on. No one has ever been hurt by a little friendly competition. Then he quoted some old movie. It's strictly business. Bob was furious. Stefan was going to pay for this. Bob ramped up the business quickly in 2122. He sold Moss Burgers, Moss Fries and Moss Milkshakes for a total of 100 MC. He purchased ingredients for these items for 30 MC and the people hired as crew members cost him 25 MC. He entered these costs in the income statement under the line cost of goods sold, which was how most stock screeners back in 2022 would have treated these two costs. An income statement is a record of how net income or profit in a business was generated. You start with the company's revenues or sales and subtract its expenses. The income statement is sometimes referred to as the statement of revenue and expenses, which might be a more telling name. Net income is a good indicator of how much money could potentially be distributed to you as an investor. I say potentially, because there are a few more things to consider, and we'll soon cover the most important ones. Bob calculated that his gross profit for the first year was 45 MC. Bob had noticed that Stefan tried to send in spies into his kitchen, perhaps to understand what type of equipment he used there, to copy that as well. Therefore, Bob hired a bouncer for 2 MC. Moreover, he spent 10 MC on an ad targeted to people who often traveled between Noctis City and Cupola City. Then there was the electricity bill. The company that beamed him the energy required to operate the restaurant wanted 3 MC. These three costs belong to the selling, general and admin expenses category. When I analyzed 100 of the largest listed companies, the median COGS expense was almost half of the revenue. SDNA is a vital cost too, at a little less than one-fourth. Those are big bites from the potential income to us investors. This is a general theme for the line items presented in this video. They are not an exhaustive description of what financial statements can contain. Instead, they are the most important ones for you as an investor, as observed when I looked at 100 large and 100 small listed companies. Here's how you differentiate between COGS and SGNA. As a rule of thumb, Bob asks himself, would this cost increase as a direct effect of us selling more? If the answer is yes, the expense will probably go in COGS. If the answer is no, it 
could end up somewhere else, but most often in SGNA. Will the cost of the ingredients for Mars milkshakes increase if Bob sells more? An obvious one. Yes, so costs of goods sold. Will the cost of the commercial in Noctis City increase if Bob sells more? No, and this cost belongs to selling general and admin expenses. Will the cost of properties increase if Bob sells more? Well, kind of, but it takes a ton of sales to outgrow a whole restaurant, so this cost does not belong in COGS. But it does not belong in SGNA either. It does not end up directly in the income statement, even though it was by far the largest expense during Bob's first year. This might sound a bit strange, but just a minute, it seems like Bob is having trouble at the restaurant. Bob couldn't understand how his bouncer missed this guy. It didn't look like one of Stefan's spies, but it certainly didn't look like an everyday customer either. He approached Bob and said, I like this restaurant, especially the fly-through. If you're ever in need of some cash, be sure to hook us up. Let's just say that we're okay with other types of collateral than ordinary banks. We trust that with enough incentives, everyone pays in the end. He put his card on the desk and left. The Swedish Mars Mafia? Huh, Bob hoped he wouldn't have to deal with those guys. So, the most significant expense for Bob during his first year of business was the restaurant itself. Yet, this didn't end up in the statement of revenue and expenses. That might sound a bit strange, but it is because this cost is expected to be useful for a very long duration of time. Therefore, it is capitalized, which means that it is added to the balance sheet as an asset rather than being expensed directly in the income statement. Instead, the cost is split over multiple years through depreciation and amortization. Remember that Bob paid 250 MC in total for land, restaurant and kitchen equipment. We'll simplify this a bit, but let's say that the restaurant can be used for 20 years and the kitchen equipment for 10 years. Bob paid 100 MC for the restaurant. And with that cost split over 20 years, how much would that be per year? Yep, 5 MC. He paid 50 MC for the kitchen equipment, which should be split over 10 years. This also equals to 5 MC per year. So Bob writes that his depreciation and amortization cost for the year 21-22 is 10 MC, 5 plus 5. Moreover, he notes this in the balance sheet by writing down the value of these assets by the same amount. Please note that land is never considered to depreciate, unless under very specific circumstances. Bob concluded that this meant that the net income for 21-22 was... Wait, what is going on here? Stefan was raising a massive sign on the other side of the Martian flying car road. 50% off all prices for the entirety of 21-23? Only at Mars Donos Plus? What? Stefan, what is this? Oh, it's just something I want to try to increase the sales for next year. Okay, fair, but 50% off? Isn't that a bit much? Where are your profit margins at? Uh, I don't know, does it matter? Bob concluded that his own operating profit margin was at 20%. There was no way to cover his business-related expenses if he had to lower his prices by 50% to match Stefan. The loan from the Martian bank had a 2.5% interest rate, so his interest expenses for 21-22 were 5 MC. The corporate tax on all Mars businesses was 33%, so Bob concluded that, at least for 21-22, the profits looked quite nice at 10 MC, a 10% net profit margin. With the income statement out of the way, he moved on to the balance sheet. The net income he added to the line retained earnings. And now the balance sheet was suddenly out of balance. Liabilities and equity seemed to be higher than assets. Enter cash flow statement. A cash flow statement is a record of how cash and equivalents, yes, it's that line from the balance sheet, have changed over a certain period. You recognize that the bottom of the income statement represents the top of the cash flow statement. So now you know the most important thing linking the three financial statements together. A cash flow statement adds up three segments, cash from operations, cash from investing, and cash from financing to determine the net change in cash for a certain period. Then, 
This number is added to cash and equivalents in the balance sheet. Bob first added back the 10 MC that he had previously subtracted in depreciation and amortization when calculating his net income. A depreciation and amortization expense does not require cash to change hands. In this case, the cash outlay comes before the expense, but under a different heading. Bob concluded that his cash from operations for 21-22 was 20 MC. The cash from operations represents cash generated by the day-to-day -day restaurant business. Next up is cash generated or used in investing activities. Yes, this is one part of the cash flow statement where the net earnings of many companies tend to shrink. You should watch out for this as an intelligent investor. It is not necessarily something evil though, if the money is reinvested in the business wisely. Still, you should realize that this money is deducted from the cash that could have been distributed to you as a shareholder. Investing activities are where cash is spent or generated through purchasing and selling long-term assets. Mars Donald spent 250 MC on building a new restaurant, and Bob entered this under capital expenditure, as you may remember. To finance this, he put in 100 MC through the issuance of common stock, which he paid himself, and by borrowing 200 MC from the Martian bank, which is cash from financing. In total, the net change in cash from Mars Donald's business in 21-22 was 70 MC, which Bob enters under the cash and equivalent section of the balance sheet. And that's what Bob's financial statements look like after the first year of business. But there is still more to learn. And now the stakes were rising, as Stefan suddenly turned this into a race to the bottom. 21-23, a bloody price war. Going into 21-23, the income statement and the cash flow statement of Mars Donalds were reset, while the balance sheet kept accumulating. Remember my far from perfect analogy. The balance sheet is a selfie of your physique. The income statement and the cash flow statement are the training regimes and diets you were on during specific periods. A new year could be a way to revamp training and diet routines, but the physique… well… It's going to stick with you, and it will be a result of your previous efforts. Mars Donalds was bleeding money. Bob decided to keep his prices high, but he sold less because Stefan had declared price war and was attracting cheap customers. Bob could decrease his expenses related to ingredients and crew members a tiny bit because COGS goes up and down with revenue. But it was different with his SGNA costs. Bob couldn't do much about the marketing, the bouncer, and the electricity bill. He thought that if people didn't know about the restaurant, they might not come at all. At least he didn't have to pay anything in income tax for the year, as he didn't make any profits. The retained earnings at Mars Donalds were reduced, and once again, the balance sheet was out of balance. As Bob had sold less than he expected, there was still about 15 MC in value in inventory by the end of the year. This didn't just affect the balance sheet. It also involved a line in the cash flow statement, change in networking capital. There are many pluses and minuses to consider here, but try to think about it like this. When Bob's inventory increases by 15 MC, that represents money that could have become cash otherwise. As it belongs to the business daily operations, it represents a deduction from the cash from operations. The net change in cash for 21-23 was minus 30 MC, and Bob reduced his cash and equivalents in the balance sheet by the same amount. Then he went over to Stefan, who had put up another sign for 21-24. You are running us both into the ground by doing this! What do you mean? You can't possibly turn a profit by selling Mars burgers at a 60% discount! You're right. But I still have quite a lot of money in my family fund. I think I can play this game longer than you can, knowing how your grandparents splurged. So, throw in the towel, maybe? Bob knew that his grandma and grandpa hadn't exactly been the most frugal of earthlings. Even with all the kids produced, Bob's great-great-grandfather Elon had left such an enormous sum of money that it had been difficult for them to spend. But they had still managed to do it. They had sold all their Tesla Max shares, and Bob's side of the family had been forced to create their own luck ever since. His mom and dad had tried their best on Earth, but had always struggled. Bob was not going to fail on Mars.
2124. Developing a secret recipe. In 2124, Bob made some bold business decisions. He went to Cupola City to hire a chemist and cook he had heard about, Laura. Do you think you can make my Mars fries tastier than Stefan's? Bob, I will make your Mars fries literally irresistible. Laura wasn't exactly cheap though. She cost Bob five times as much to employ as his bouncer. Bob recorded the expenses associated with her salary as research and development. By the end of 2124, she had created some fantastically tasty Mars fries. Also, Bob had been able to get rid of his excessive inventory, which was tying up cash. However, they had more immediate problems. Stefan had increased his discounts, so Mars Donald's revenues had declined even further. Bob noted that, with only 25 MC left in the bank, they weren't likely to last another year. In fact, in early 2125, even 12 months seemed optimistic, because there were more black clouds on the Mars skies. 2125. A gamble with the Mafia. The Martian bank called Bob on his Mars phone. Mr. Musk, I see that your company's debt-to-equity ratio has increased above the limit which was discussed in our deal. Bob had feared that this day might come. I'm afraid that you will have to turn in the keys to your restaurant, unless you can come up with additional liquidity in the next 30 days. As was discussed in 2122, the property itself is the collateral of our deal. Damn! Marstonos now had more than four times more debt than equity. Bob knew that this was alarmingly high. But what did he say? Collateral, collateral... Bob suddenly remembered something. Let's just say that we're okay with other types of collateral than ordinary banks. Bob searched desperately through the restaurant for the business card. There! That's right, the Swedish Mars Mafia! Could they be his way out of this? Whoa, girl, these fries are crispy. Better than any moss fries I've ever had before. Huh? Laura's fries really seem to soften this tough guy up. The guy, pointing to Bob, but still talking to Laura, said, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. We will give you the 300 you asked for, but I've changed my mind. We want equity instead. Equity? Do, do, do you want to buy our stock? Yes, 300 MC for 15% of the company. 10%? Bob received a look that said that this was not a negotiation. Price just went up to 20%, pal. Issuing equity instead of debt can have certain disadvantages. If the business does well, more shareholders have a claim on the profits. However, it had many advantages in this situation. Bob could be more long-term with his business moves, as shareholders cannot force the company to pay like creditors can. So, but just so you know, that bouncer will not be able to save you if there are no dividends next year. Okay, perhaps not so long-term, after all. Bob was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Said and done, Bob issued new shares to pay off the Martian bank loan in 2125. As the Swedish Mars Mafia was willing to pay more than the par value of the shares, he listed this next to additional paid-in capital in the balance sheet. Bob had effectively paid off his creditors by issuing new equity. Laura's breakthrough with the crispiness of the fries was due to a specific chemical compound that she added to the frying oil. They decided that they'd better patent and trademark this before Stefan tried to steal the idea from them. The filings associated with this cost Mars Donalds quite a bit of money. As it created a long-term asset for them, they could capitalize the charges, much like Bob had been able to do with the restaurant itself. He listed the cost of getting both the patent and the trademark, Crispy Mars Fries, as other intangibles in the balance sheet, and amortized one MC per year. The patent they had received would last for 20 years. The cost associated with receiving the patent was 20 MC, so that's one MC per year. Amortization works similarly to depreciation, but it's the cost associated with writing down intangible instead of tangible assets. Now that the patent was secured, Bob and Laura decided to double down on their marketing efforts. They changed their old campaign, which Laura had been questioning for a while, to focus on their Crispy Mars Fries trademark. This increased their SGNA cost, but it also increased their revenue in 2125, especially towards the end of the year. 
Bob thought that he saw a positive trend. 2126, going viral. Then, in 2126, the breakthrough happened, as a miracle from the Mars heavens. One of the most influential foodie channels on YouTube Plus uploaded a video of himself enjoying their crispy Mars fries. Bob's company's revenues exploded. His cogs increased quite a bit during the year, because suddenly he had to extend his opening hours and buy more ingredients. The SGNA expenses increased too, as he had to hire an accountant so Bob could focus on expanding the business. All in all though, Mars Donalds turned a net profit of 123 MC during the year. Hearing about the success, the suppliers of Bob's business began to allow him to purchase on credit, with a payment due in 60 days. As a result, Bob accumulated accounts payable, a current liability due to his vendors. He had also created the mirror image of accounts payable, selling his fries on credit to a massive party in Noctis. Bob's accountant entered that in the accounts receivables. It represented money that he was going to get but hadn't received yet. Actually, he was never going to see that cash because the firm hosting the party went bankrupt. 100 years earlier, Charlie Munger would have said about financial statements that the liabilities are always 100% good. It is the assets you have to worry about. Bob now had to learn about this the hard way. However, he was on a roll and the party in Noctis represented just a tiny hiccup. Bob decided to pay certain key members of his staff, such as Laura, a cash bonus for the year. While the employees earned the payment in 2126, they would receive the actual cash in February 2127. As such, it represented a current liability that Bob's accountant added to the balance sheet under a line item called accrued expenses. Remembering that Bouncer will not be able to save you if there are no dividends next year. Bob decided to pay his first small dividend, as Mars Donalds now had cash and retained earnings. Yes, both are required for a company to be legally allowed to pay a dividend. It wasn't much, but it represented a 2% yield on the Swedish Mars Mafia's investment, as they owned 20% of the shares and thus had a right to 20% of the dividends. He hoped that that would keep them at bay. The dividend was deducted from retained earnings in the balance sheet. 2130. Bob's Revenge A few years passed, and Bob was able to expand the business with a combination of more earnings and a new loan from the Martian bank. Mars Donalds now had two additional locations, one between Noctis and Capital, and another one between Capital and Underground City. Even though the Swedish Mars Mafia were pleased with these expansions, they gave Bob the jitters. So, in 2130, with the capital accumulated in the business, he decided to buy them out. The group seemed quite pleased about getting 900 MC for their 20% stake in a company earning 340 MC per year. Bob calculated that they sold at a PE just north of 13. He hadn't been happy selling a fast-growing company at 13 times earnings himself, but as he stood on the other side of the deal, he didn't complain. Price, price, price. The secret to investing is to figure out the value of something and then pay a lot less, Joel Greenblatt would have said. As he used the company's capital to repurchase the shares, they ended up in the so-called treasury stock on the balance sheet, representing a contra-equity account. Bob had now restored his 100% ownership of the business. Then Stefan came for a visit. All right, man, you win. Uh, are you throwing in the towel, Stefan? I'm running out of Tesla Max shares to sell to keep the restaurant afloat. I've only got 50 MC left. Alright. Can you buy me out? No way, man. But come on, I'll give you the secret ingredient to my Mars salads. Bob couldn't decide if he should do Stefan this favor. Stefan had stolen his concept and then engaged in a bloody price war to try to force Bob out of his own business. But he realized that the deal could make sense from a business perspective. Stefan's Mars salads were quite popular, just not as popular as Bob's crispy Mars fries. The salads could probably complement his menu. If Bob decided to purchase Stefan's business, anything he paid above 90 MC would end up in the balance sheet under the heading Goodwill. 
This was because Stefan's company had a book value of 90, meaning that when his company's liabilities were subtracted from its assets, there was still a net 90 MC left. Bob also played with the idea of buying Stefan's 50 MC of Tesla Max shares, taking back what his grandparents had lost. Fine, Stefan. I'll buy you out for 200 MC. You'll have to sign an agreement to never open a restaurant on Mars again. And I want those 50 MC of Tesla Max shares that you have. You will sell them to me for 40. Whoa, that's tough. No. It's strictly business. Now, if you want to learn how to apply these numbers to find great opportunities in the stock market, check out this video. Cheers, guys.